My name is Jim Dworkin. I'm the Director of Marketing in the Data Center segment for Xilinx. And this is the old bait and switch here. So it said SmartNIC on the uh, agenda. Not only are we going to talk about SmartNIC, but we're going to talk in general about acceleration technologies and foundational elements that we're building into these products that Napa Tech can take advantage of on behalf of you, their partners, and customers. So let's start by going into some market uh, overview stuff. I'll talk about the reconfigurable acceleration for data centers. And then Awanish Verma is here. He's our senior architect in the communications segment, which is parallel to mine. So we work very closely together. Awanish will talk about, indeed, the SmartNIC and the NFV, specifically for Telco Cloud. And then we'll uh, wrap up with a summary. So in case you don't know much about Xilinx, we are the all programmable company. We were founded in 1984, and we are the leader in FPGA solutions in the market. So we're number one by a pretty comfortable margin at this point. Most of you know Altera is the main other one. I think we're at about 56% market share, truth be told, uh, against Altera. And then there are a few other smaller ones, players, more niche players. We have 20,000 customers. You can read the metrics. We have 3,500 employees, including a couple thousand in Longmont here, a short one-hour drive or 45-minute drive from here. Um, many, many patents. In terms of um, revenue, our company is at a run rate of about $2.4 billion per year. Last fiscal year, 16, it was $2.21 billion. So with that and the market share numbers, was kind of, you can kind of infer that the FPGA market itself is about a roughly a $5 billion market. So we have multiple market segments within Xilinx. There are eight of them. I'm, again, representing the data center segment, which is the smallest one. We don't report it uh, separately to Wall Street, but we are the fastest growing by far. So there's a lot of dialogue from the analysts about our segment. But we cut our, our solutions are horizontal, and they cut across multiple market segments. So if you look at multi-market growth drivers for our company. You look at anything from embedded vision to industrial IoT, 5G wireless, these things were, and cloud computing, of course, is more near and dear to the data center segment where I am. And Jared hit up on many of these themes earlier, so I guess I'm not, in order to save time, I won't go through these in great detail other than to say what really seems to be cutting across all of these. You've heard machine learning said about a thousand times today already, and that's not unusual. So it's a really hot space, and we have solutions that are, that are cutting across all of these high growth uh, vertical uh, sub-segments. So let's talk about acceleration for data centers, and, and maybe I'll tell you a few things that you didn't know already. For the data center segment itself, the need for acceleration um, nicely cuts across compute, storage, and networking type of workloads. So that speaks to versatility. We have very versatile products, and fortunately, there's a useful, uh, useful use case in each of those sub-segments, um, multiple ones, as a matter of fact. So those are driving our growth. There's the well-talked-about um, decline of Moore's Law to whatever extent or context you want to put it in. We have the rise of cloud computing, of course, and uh, different compute-intensive applications are becoming, you know, breaking through, if you will, like uh, data analytics and machine learning and video, so video streaming, video transcoding. And that's creating bottlenecks that, um, you know, Luca was talking about a lot of these, and it's been a very common theme among the earlier speakers today, this creating bottlenecks that require creative solutions. Xilinx accelerates critical hyperscale workloads to a very high degree across multiple different use cases. So just look at the first two from the left, machine learning inference. Uh, the Xilinx products that we have, uh, if you know much about machine learning, you know there's the training and inference. It was, uh, Russ, I think, had two different names for it, classification, and I forget the other one. But basically, the training side is heavily floating point oriented. It's really um, not a space where Xilinx plays particularly well. Inference, we do quite well. And in inference, there are two 
major use cases that are driving the, the, acti the major activity here. One is image recognition and the other is speech recognition, so voice. Uh, there's also video and a lot of combinations thereof of, of these things that are kind of bridging from the IoT space endpoints all the way into the data center where we play. So those are some of the major applications there, but in the last week or two actually, and, and including today, heavily the theme is network analytics and how do you fold network um, intelligence into a machine learning context and make it something, and do something useful with it. And that is a quite a solvable problem, uh, we believe. So we are kind of amen to everyone who has mentioned that, the earlier speakers. Okay, data, data analytics themselves, SQL, uh, database <clears throat> acceleration, SQL queries. We have benchmarks that indicate very high um, speed ups when using acceleration technology versus CPU only. Video transcoding, 18x, you can read across. So storage, comp storage compression is an interesting one. Um, there are companies that are putting, uh, counterintuitively, putting FPGAs in storage endpoints. So there is a partner of ours that has uh, a PCIe SSD and then a U.2 form factor SSD with an FPGA in each one. So FPGAs have a um, reputation for being high cost and high power and et cetera, not absolutely not true. We have a very broad portfolio where you wouldn't believe the constrained environments and uh, high power, as a matter of fact, but we have very constrained environments that we go into with our, our quite diverse and wide portfolio. So storage compression is the use case for that one. And um, to the gentleman from Facebook, Eric, I believe, uh, you might be interested in something like that or anyone that's doing Hadoop or HDFS type of workloads you can enable compression if you can do it transparently at the drive or they call it computational storage, then you can accelerate your, um, your storage workloads or d data analytics quite a bit. And then networking, so Awanish is gonna talk a lot about the networking use cases. All right, Xilinx leadership in data center. I talked about our market share as number one in FPGAs. We internally, and actually to the street, I believe, we talk about what we call the, the three-peat. It used to be Altera versus Xilinx. Depending on the year, it would be one up, you know, one up one year, down one year, that kind of thing. Well, now it's three, three consecutive technology nodes at TSMC uh, and Intel with its own fabs where we have outdueled them and won. So you see our market share on 28 nanometer, 20 nanometer, and 16 nanometer has actually grown. This is as of the date of introduction of the first product. What was our market share in that technology node? And our latest is the 16 nanometer products, and we have 100% on that as of the time it was introduced in fiscal 16. Okay, so this is always fun to talk about. The, track, the traction that FPGAs are getting in these uh, acceleration workloads for data center. You've all probably heard of the big seven, the super seven, the top seven, so BAT in China, and then the big four here in the US. Well, we have, oh, this is not updated as of today um, or yesterday. It says three of those seven in production, and all are in trials, and that's actually Five of the seven are announced and in production with uh, two others in trial. So it's amazing what's going on in terms of the, uh, uh, the Xilinx FPGAs. And in the case of Microsoft, they're famously using Altera uh, for their catapult-driven Azure deployment of FPGA plus NIC in a smart NIC configuration. So that's an Altera deployment, but we also have engagements going on with Microsoft too, so things can always change. Anyway, the, our record is really good with the hyperscalers, and there's quite a halo effect or waterfall effect, depending on how you wanna look at it, into the on-premise um, uh, folks that, that don't want to go to Amazon. I'll talk about Amazon a little bit more in a second. And, um, and also enabling the tier twos and tier three 
um, cloud players, okay? Web 2.0 and other cloud players. Xilinx in the bottom left, the software leadership, we are investing heavily in software and tools. And this is important for you all in the room because the message I want you to know is that it used to be that FPGAs were, here's a device, here's, you know, get yourself some Verilog coders, and here's the tool to translate that onto the FPGA, and it was quite labor intensive. We do have customers that are still using it in that way. You get great results out of that, but we've invested a lot in the higher level tools, C, C++. We have an OpenCL compiler now, and in, when it comes to machine learning, I'll talk a lot in the next few slides about the reconfigurable acceleration uh, platform that we have, which is vertical, so it consists of not just the chip and the compiler and the framework, but also libraries and then the machine learning framework like um, Spark and TensorFlow and others that allow folks that want to code at a very high level to get their neural network or whatever implemented down on the FPGA very quickly. So that is how we're going to grow as a company. So we're investing in productivity tools, in, um, in people, of course, and the benefits are, as I just described. Da there's a whole ecosystem in our data center segment of folks, third parties, that are bringing solutions of different types into the uh, machine learning kind of uh, swimming pool. So I'll, let me just go to the next slide, and I'll talk, or, or a few slides down, I'll talk about the Amazon marketplace where these folks are providing solutions that run on the Amazon deployments. So these are some of our leadership products in the 16 nanometer node that I was talking about. We have any, well, we, that 16 nanometer node is called UltraScale Plus, and we have Zinc as well, so those are uh, SOCs, so they have embedded ARM um, processors on those devices with reconfigurable gate array or FPGA technology all on the same device. So we have Zinc, we have UltraScale Plus, and we have the um, SDX or software divine environments. That's a lot of the tools and libraries and frameworks that I was talking about. All of that investment is going into that, that right side of that picture. So proof points, three I mentioned out of the seven. We had uh, five of those. These are some of the earliest proof points. <clears throat> Amazon Web Service. So Amazon has something called F1. It was mentioned earlier. I forget who uh, or several people. It's called F1. It's on AWS. You can use it today. And that's called uh, FAS, FPGA as a service. It's um, basically servers that have multiple FPGA cards in them. They use these high, higher level tools and stacks that I was just talking about, and they make that all available to you. So if you know how to write Verilog, you can actually go on an F1 instance, get some time, use our Vivado uh, H, HDL or HLS tool, and commit your design, you know, hello world or whatever you want to write, and you can get that off on a running on an F1 instance and do it very cost effectively. So that's uh, been driving a uh, sig significant amount of our stock growth, we believe, at uh, Xilinx. In the middle is the Microsoft deployment I was talking about. So yes, that's using a competitor for network-based acceleration that's at the server, but it also validates the, the concept. And that could just as easily have been a Xilinx device. Um, and again, it's just validation that this isn't fast. This is Azure deploying in every server a, a card that has NIC, a Mellanox NIC, plus an Altera FPGA for compute acceleration and network acceleration. And finally, Baidu. So Baidu announced that they had deployed FPGAs in their data center as a pooled resource. This is not fast either, so they don't offer FPGAs as a, as a service to um, you know, as a cloud service to anyone who wants to use it, but they use it for internal uh, network to accelerate their own workloads. Okay, so they're doing machine learning around automotive and speech. So this, these are just three of the use cases, and I could go on and on about a few others as well. Amazon has driven this 
notion of reconfigurable acceleration from at least on the cloud side that's causing this halo effect or waterfall effect into the enterprise. So there are folks that want to enable the rest of the world that for whatever reason, they don't want to run their workloads on the Amazon cloud, but they want to kind of run those, those same workloads that are enabled by all those partners that, that are up on the Amazon uh, F1 all those application developers you see there in the middle. So this is happening, and you can see around genomic security, general machine learning, um, image recognition as an example. There's video transcoding, big data, and financial analytics. All of these different use cases have partners that are up on the Amazon marketplace. So if you go on that F1, you don't have to write RTL. You're doing something at a much higher level in order to get your your application to run. So how are we enabling all this to happen? We have something called the reconfigurable acceleration stack. And I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier where the FPGA hardware is the lowest level thing. And then we have frameworks and libraries that get built on top of that. And that Xilinx provides most of that in terms of tools and the frameworks and libraries. And then you have open source and other sort of, sort of use case or domain or vertically specific solutions like OpenStack or P4 or what have you for networking. And then there's different codecs for video and storage has its own set of SQL or you know, MySQL or these types of things. That all rides on top. So you'll see in a, in a picture soon how each of the storage, networking, and well, it's networking, storage, and compute, okay? So compute is data analytics, transcoding, machine learning, how all of that can be enabled through a, a singular platform type architecture that we have. I hope this is clear. Please stop me if, if it isn't. So application development looks like this for any of you in the hardware and software world, depending on where you are. There are different platforms, so you see in the left bubble there a picture of one of our reference design cards that could just as easily be an Apotec card. You have Xilinx runtime libraries and tools. You, we have profiling and debugging and all of that stuff uh, and the libraries and frameworks on top of that. All in our, the brand is SDX. And so with that, as I said, you can program in any of those higher level languages and still get high quality of results on our devices. There are many, many examples onboarding on GitHub and active community forums that you can take part in and read our blogs. And it's, it's an amazing amount of outbound information that Xilinx provides in order to educate. So this one's a little more detail on the um, programmable acceleration platform that we built. So what you're looking at below, below the PCIe is the accelerator. So think of this as your Napa Tech card. And you have the connectivity to the Tor. Maybe it's a 100 gig NIC kind of ingress, egress. There might be a vSwitch offload in there, crypto, quas, TM, metering, maybe Rocky, RDMA. Potentially, you could even do iWarp. Right? We're agnostic. You can implement whatever you want if you have a tow engine. So those are all networking widgets, if you will, networking components. And then, of course, the DMA that talks to the, through the SDXL infrastructure into the host up top. Now, that little, little big box there on the right is the compute acceleration kernels, and that's where they could coexist with your networking flow. So think of it as a NIC. Here's your NIC operating at high speed. Over here are your compute kernels. That's where you're using our, um, our DSP engines on the device, as an example, to run your neural networks. So you're in very close proximity to all of that data to enable your networking analytics that you want to do that Luca was talking about. Everything you were saying was resonating with me that we're providing a platform where you can do this all in one location on one card if you want, or multiple, of course. 
Up at the top is where you differentiate by application, networking, compute, or storage, and you know, those have their own vertical library and, and sets of middleware that could be there. But as long as you have a standard interface or standard driver into the uh, hardware, you're in business. So this is our goal, is to assemble through partnership and through organic IP development, both these widgets and these pieces that you can integrate into the hardware underneath our tools and have it all work and be compatible with the Amazon marketplace and all of those third-party IP providers, and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. We are, I, w I wanted to say desperately, we're not desperate, but we are very diligently working to create this um, platform that you all can stand up on to do great things. This is an interesting competitive data point I thought I'd throw in there. Um, Xilinx FPGAs, if you look at machine learning inference, this is publicly available data. The Xilinx rows, the top three, are the top three, and then you see Altera with the ARIA 10. So that VU13P device in the top row, that's our highest end device today. Amazon has, it's actually in, um, not quite in production, very close. The VU9P is in production. That's the one that Amazon has deployed and others. Okay, so that's the VU9P. The KU115 is a Kintex device, so that's a mid-range device, and I, I believe Napatek has used both the Vertex and the Kintex um, ultra scale and also 20 nanometer and older. So what you see is if you look at the uh, GOPS or Giga Ops per watt for inference, you see that our devices are two to three times more efficient than the competing device from, from Intel Altera. So we hope to continue investing in our, in our devices to Keep that lead. By the way, I'll throw in a minor plug. Um, how am I doing on time? Okay, so far, almost done. Oh, Anish. Um, the we have our 16 nanometer devices, the like the VU 13P as the flagship. We have additional devices coming out in that family at the 16 nanometer node. Uh, two different classes of device. One has what's called HBM. This ought to be very interesting to you folks. HBM is high bandwidth memory. So that FPGA chip in that package integrates DRAM chips from another vendor, all in the same package. And it's accessible, it look, just looks like a memory to the FPGA, but it's HBM, it's high bandwidth memory. So you get much more ba memory bandwidth to that memory than you would if it was an external DDR. And that's to the, to the maximum we'll have is eight gigabytes on, on any, ch on the high end chip. There's gonna be an eight and a four gigabyte, okay? So very, very useful for machine learning and other acceleration technologies and even networking if you wanna do capture, if you want some buffer space or you want some table, you know, flow lookup space. So that's coming. Another product that's coming are going to be, um, uh, those 60 nanometer devices with 50 gig certies. So basically IO rich devices where you can do PAM 4, 4 by 50 for 200 gigs. So someone was mentioning that 100 gig is available today. Well, you know, Broadcom is the leader in the switching. They're gonna have 50 gig certies soon, I believe. And we will have devices uh, that might interest some of you with that 50 gig certies as well. High, high density, high bandwidth IO. Okay, so quickly, when you look across the landscape, remember what I said, compute, storage, and networking. Fortunately, there are a lot of different use cases for FPGAs and data centers. Well, this is a slide that tries to capture at least some of those major ones. I'm not gonna read through all of this. I think it will be, the slides will be made available and you can look at it, but the, the top left is really financially oriented, so that the Wall Street type Analysts and banks would be interested. Video transcoding, I think, kind of speaks for itself. There's the deep learning stuff we, I was talking about earlier, so that's compute acceleration. Under storage, there's database I talked about, compression, and 
uh, scale out storage, so at things like NVMe over fabrics as an example. So that's being enabled and we have that working today. And then uh, Awanish is gonna talk a lot more about the networking side shortly. So it's a, that's a very, very rich space as well. When you look at smart NIC requirements, and I have about two more slides here, we, this is the vision here, is to take and basically make an intelligent programmable host to ethernet um, interface. So you see on the FPGA on the right, you're gonna have some hard blocks for the PCIe, and we do have Gen 4, as a matter of fact, today. So we're always on the kind of leadership edge with this stuff. And on the bottom, you see the 25, 50 gig transceivers. So that's, those are the, you know, those are the edges of the device. And then inside, you might have soft IP for PCIe DMA, the, the FEC and 25 gig ethernet max and so on. And then the important bits are, most important are on the inside. So that's the inline functionality for a reconfigurable uh, smart NIC. That's exactly the type of architecture that my understanding is Napatech will continue to take advantage of, and we will continue to enable. Okay, and in terms of accelerators, I just wanted to say, again, a big thank you to Napatech for being a great partner of ours. Xilinx itself provides many development kits and um, reference designs, so we're actually proud of the fact that we offer schematics and layout to our partners that want to design with our products. And part of that, the reason that's important, again, is just enablement. So we're going to help enable Napatech to align future hardware to this Amazon F1 uh, marketplace. So that, once we do that, then we can enable the machine learning and unlock a bunch of additional workloads that you can take advantage of many of which I've heard about in the last six hours. So, you know, I'm really excited about that. Okay, are there any quick questions for me? I'll be around, but if not, then I'll, oh, there's one. Stuff we wanted to, or I wanted to ask about, which is like, as a customer of these cards, how do I utilize these cards more than I already am, like through existing vendor relationships you have? Yeah. Do you kind of answer that? Um, I'm wondering, do you have any companies you can point to that have done development to utilize these cards coming from like a technology company perspective that I can like You mean chat partners of uh, IP partners of ours? For Not, example, I mean, like I want to do development on these cards to do compression for PCAP, right? But I don't want to necessarily be an IP partner because of I just want to do it on my own and then release it. How, how have you seen customers do that so far, or have you seen customers on their own do this development? What resources did it take? So we them? have third-party partners that, so there's two, it, it, I'm gonna give you a general answer, sure, and we sure. can talk specific yeah, offline or whatever, Thanks. but you know, in general, we have internal IP, organically developed IP that we just provide, and we have third-party IP vendors that would provide compatible IP that you could have a business relationship as well. So those are in, kind of like ISVs, independent software vendors. So that would make a complete solution for you. So that's the general case. If you have a proprietary IP or your favorite IP or whatever uh, you want to do it yourself, then we'll provide you all the tools and support necessary in order to optimize and commit a design to the right FPGA for you. And that could even, that doesn't preclude Napatech as an example. You know, so we could have a more open collaborative development kind of uh, environment. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? The, the slide you showed with application development in the middle. Yep. And FPGA card on the right and Amazon Web Services on the left. Yeah. Is there a common framework that you can develop to that will give you both of those with one kind yes. of development effort? Yes, and that, that common framework is, is in here. It's in our reconfigurable uh, stack. That's under our brand SDX, and broadly, as you do some research, look for SDXL. So SDXL is the framework that knows how to transfer information over a PCIe interface to our DMA engine and put it all in the right places using the ultra RAM or the DSP blocks or the whatever. That's the way you get these designs into the device if you're running your custom neural net or whatever it is, okay? 
that all runs underneath the SDXL umbrella. So that's, that's what Amazon has done. And when Napatek and you and others get aligned around SDXL, then you get all the benefit of the research and development that we're doing to enable that and make it seamless across cloud to enterprise. Great, thank you. Anything else? All right, thank you very much, Awanish. Yep. It's all yours. Thanks, Jim. So I'm Avanish, and I am architect in STN and NFV group in Xilinx. Uh, Jim already uh, covered many of the data center use cases, and I'm on the comm side of the business, so I mainly deals with the communication wired and wireless, and within the wired and wireless, uh, mainly to the STN and NFV. And I have been working with Napatek as a partner for STN and NFE use cases on their smart NIC. So I'll go through some of the use cases and then on the smart NIC details, what we are trying to do and what we are trying to achieve with the, with the network acceleration specifically. So to cover some of the telecom use cases, the 5G wireless is one of the major use case. And this picture kind of covers the whole end-to-end -end use case. So right here is the user equipment. And these are the antennas which connect to the cloud RAN or BBU uh, over the line of sight communication or the front hall interface. And then data comes all the way to the uh, core cloud or through the EPC core, mobile EPC core. And in this space where radio where a lot of this functionality like fast Fourier transform, or uh, digital pre-distortion, all those things are already implemented into the FPGAs. And Xilinx by far the leader in the programmable space in this space. So a lot of tier one service provider, they are already using this uh, radio implementation into the FPGAs. Now, when it comes to NFV, uh, it is the virtualization of cloud run and the L2, L3 virtualization in this space, and same thing, acceleration in this EPC cloud. So we are very actively working in the network acceleration cards, like a smart NIC, to accelerate the services which are provisioned as a part of L2, L3 acceleration in the smart NIC. So for example, that would be uh, PDCP acceleration or the air crypto acceleration, which are offloaded from the CPU to save the CPU cycle and increase the performance five to seven times. And another area to focus would be the front hall gateway. So here it is showing as a line of sight communication between the radio and the edge cloud, but this can be C pre interface or EC pre interface or time sensitive network ethernet interface. So another place where FPGA can be used because EC pre standards are not fixed yet. EC pre is, is still coming up so all those flexible interfaces we have already implemented in one of the reference platform, which provide the connectivity from here to here. And everybody knows Ethernet is the most, most common interface from here to here as well. It can be anything though. And this is Cloud RAN. So Cloud RAN also has flexible split. So that split is still being finalized by the 3GPP. So FPGA provides an ideal platform to implement those flexible split right now until until, the, until that split becomes the final. And EPC is kind of already implemented into the x86 servers. So here also we have a lot of scope to accelerate those functions by accelerating some common functions like IPsec or OVS offload. The second use case of the NFV would be the multi-access edge cloud. It is one of the upcoming use case, use case and big data, IoT, and social media where a lot of game data or the image processing that has to be offloaded, offloaded onto the edge cloud instead of going to the core cloud. So where, and where the acceleration will play an important role. Actually last week in MWCA there was a presentation from Verizon that when image processing is offloaded to the core network, the tracking from the drone immediately fails versus the doing the processing right at the edge. So, they are contributing towards a very important use case for FPGA acceleration or the acceleration into the edge cloud. And 
Why FPGA for the acceleration? Because the workload, nature of a workload and what has to be accelerated is not fixed. So FPGA offer flexible acceleration platform on all these edge cloud use cases. So I was talking about the flexible split into the 5G and this, I, I won't go, go into all the details, but here is the centralized cloud and distributed cloud. And this is the 3GPP splits. So you can see how many options exist in the 3GPP split. From starting from option two to option seven, option eight. And anybody can bifurcate the functionality between here and here or here and here. But there are some standard pick point because most standard interfaces are implemented over there. So where the connection from centralized cloud CU and DU happens, the interface between them is called front hall interface. So Jalinx has already a platform where front hall interface with the CPRI and eCPRI and Ethernet is implemented. And here is the acceleration platform using the SmartNIC where the platform like Napatek comes into the picture. So here, since we are using FPGA, we can support any of the split. And this is called L1 baseband L1 split. So L1 split has so many functionality. IFFT, FFT, resource mapping, demapping, random channel allocation, modulation, demodulation. So based on where we are doing the split, whether to option 7.1 or 7.2, 7.3, we can suck into the functionality of partial L1 acceleration into the FPGA. So that's a very important use case. Already we have tier one customers who have started taking and implementing this kind of L1 functionality. And on this side as well, this side also a smart make a, a very good use case where PDCP acceleration or the GTP acceleration into the edge cloud that is becoming very, very popular. And we are getting more and more queries for use of a smart NIC into this. Uh, centralized cloud. So next picture is, I, I have, uh, these are not the only use cases. I have not covered some of the important use cases like GPON, EPON, where the CMTS and EQAM is one of the major use case for this acceleration where virtual head end is taking, getting popularity. So everyone kind of understand these slides. The goal of acceleration is to go four times more uh, CPU utilization and at least four to five times performance. Though performance and utilization vary from use case to use case, but then we already have some established benchmark and in fact, Napatek already has established some benchmark on the NFV NIC where we can get five to seven time performance gain in terms of VNF, in terms of, in terms of throughput performance. So this side is the plain Intel NIC or off the shelf NIC from common ASIC vendors and this side is the Xilinx FPGA base is smart NIC from the vendors, from the partners like Napatek. And then, here are some of the use cases. So left side of the picture shows the inline acceleration where FPGA is directly interfacing with the network card. And right side shows the look aside acceleration. And based on our experience, what we have seen that the demand for inline acceleration is more and more uh, increasing among the telco cloud. And currently, few of the customers using Xilinx along with the ASSP for acceleration to take advantage of their basic NIC functionality, which is covered by Jim in this slide, TSO, LSO, LRO, and TCP, checksum offload. But then our goal is to go into here where FPGA only platform can provide all those functionality. And not to mention all those telco providers, they don't need all the functionality of TSO, LRO. So they just want basic NIC functionality along with the acceleration like IPsec or OVS offload. And the other use cases would be look aside acceleration. They are already common in multiple x86 appliances where uh, statistics, extra classification, which SSP could not do, can be taken by the FPGA. And another important use case is uh, uh, FPGA hanging to the CPU and directly providing the acceleration of the security or compression functionality. So advantage for the acceleration is uh, cell and role model of the FPGA because this role can vary best on the cloud, telco cloud where you are sitting. 
and all this cell is already created by Jialing. So this picture is showing the uh, acceleration platform based on a single server and two Jion cores and FPGA is attaching in the cell and role model with the PCI interface. So high performance PCI links, multi rate Mac, they are already integrated by Jialing. So user who is accelerating, they don't have to worry about the interfaces. They just worry about this uh, red block, which is acceleration IP. Either these acceleration IP comes from the Jialings or the partners. And they, as a result of this model into a single networking node into the data center, we can achieve up to five to seven time performance. Another important uh, use case of the FPGA in the telco cloud, which we are actually discussing with the Napa Tech currently is uh, using FPGA acceleration as a service in the data center cloud, telco data center, where acceleration can be changed based on the network location, whether it's the edge cloud or the core cloud, taking advantage of the partial reconfiguration. So same hardware platform can be used at a different places by taking advantage of this partial reconfiguration technology. And this PRC, there is a dotted line coming from user space API. So user can just call an API from the orchestration or from the controller, and that changes the acceleration role of the FPGA smart NIC from one acceleration function to other acceleration function. And these acceleration function can come from any vendor. So it becomes acceleration as a service or FPGA as a service kind of platform. This is more elaborate picture of what can be the network function. There are multiple possibilities, but to tell you the list that HC and FV has already come up with this acceleration functions that which, should, which can take advantage of acceleration. So all these are very common. Few of them are more common than others, but eventually all of them will become common. Currently I can uh, count on few of them like OVS offload, uh, IPsec offload, SSL offload, DPI offload, and load balancer. But then machine learning or network analytics, those can be extend, extended use cases which will become common. So as I was showing in the last slide, we don't have to worry about these blocks because they are already hardened into the FPGA along with the PCI block, with the SRIUV block. All, only thing we have to worry about the acceleration IP and these interfaces are pretty much a standard XC interface to connect with the rest of the uh, hard, hard interfaces or the soft interfaces. Five minutes. So this is a picture of Napatec and FV NIC, and we have already gone to customers and partner, I mean, implementation and POC along with this NIC on the telecom uh, functionality acceleration with the functionality like OVS, functionality like compression. And we are also trying to create high level language programming support on that so that the slide which I presented in the last picture can, can become really high level programming and you don't worry about the, any of the network interfaces. And PRC, integrate PRC on this and we can go as a flexible acceleration platform with this kind of NIC. So this is another picture of cell and role acceleration model. This is showing software stack along with the hardware shell and the role. So this yellow block is the shell, which is interface. Rest of the API, the DPDK support, or crypto API, Strang Swan API, those are all currently coming through the partners. Jialings provide mainly this block and this acceleration IP are either Jialinx as a partner. So this is, this is a very critical use case which is getting very popular in the, in the telecom STN and FV application. So what is new at Jialinx? And Jim already covered it, but I'll just give you a quick, quick picture. We are going to launch this device next year which has two high bandwidth memory stacks and it can cover up to 64 gigabit of uh, DDR memory. So it is built on Vertex Ultrascale plus 16 nanometer platform. 
and it also comes integrated with the HBM controller. So all this block you can consider it as a silicon. So we don't have to worry about the utilization of this hard silicon uh, and we can take advantage of this FPGA high bandwidth memory, on chip memory to implement three important use cases which I can think from the telecom application. One is the packet buffering, traffic manager and the flow table lookup. So we are already in talking to customer about flow table lookup, which is the, I, I believe, which is the top rated use case for the, for the NFV. Lot of flow need to be looked up to implement the functionality like load balancing and fast path onto the network interface card. So when the HBM device comes back, there may be one FPGA platform which can solve all the acceleration needs and we can put like a storage acceleration, security acceleration, network acceleration on, on one device. And we can, based on the requirement, we can take, select what, what, to, what to implement. It, this picture is showing HBM along with the DDR for the bigger flow tables. I will say beyond the 10 million entries with the wide lookup results. But then it can be super set of all the application which are needed for acceleration into the telco cloud. Uh, I covered, I'll go over this quick. Uh, this is FPGAs in crypto accelerator and some of the important use cases are IPsec acceleration, which is the top. SSL offload and DPI offload is coming up. And RSA 2K and 4K, they sits into the look aside network model. So, they are already, FPGA are already being used in the RSA, uh, Diffie-Hellman kind of acceleration. To cover the tools and, uh, sorry. So, Jilinx has integrated the support of P4 into the STNet platform. So currently, anyone who is using network interface card, they can write the P4 uh, program uh, for parsing, editing, and lookup, and compile using the STNet tool chain, which sits on top of the Dialing standard FPGA implementation Vivado tool chain, and it goes into your uh, acceleration IP or classification IP into the network interface card. So this is. Uh, this is a very important step uh, in the network acceleration and all the tier ones for Jilinx, they are already evaluating this P4 implementation into, into one of the Jilinx FPGA platform. So I think that was my almost last slide. So we are looking forward to working with Napatek on this uh, telecom cloud acceleration. Uh, we already published some white paper and this uh, uh, demo on the NFV NIC by Napatek. And we are looking forward to integrate more and more IPs like crypto, IPsec. We already have compression. OVS is implemented by Napatek. Benchmark, there are already few benchmark exist, but we are looking to create more and more benchmark. P4 and STNet support is upcoming. Software drivers mostly done by Napatek, DPDK, Napatek API. So those we are uh, integrating and taking advantage of the POC of the complete solution with the Jilinx and Napatek IP. So finally, this was my last. I already received few warning that I am out of time. So summary, covering for the gym as well. A smart NIC and machine learning is a very important rapid growth use case for the network interface card next three to five years. And FPGAs are uh, very, I mean, very important uh, things to consider about the acceleration because they are only flexible platform to implement the acceleration functionality uh, and the workloads are not fixed. So everyone is looking into FPGA acceleration. And we have a strong partnership with Napatek for their platform and IPs and software. All right. Thank you, everyone.